Standards are everywhere in our modern civilization. Examples of standards include, of course, nuts and bolts, but also the parts our cars are made of, and also the operative systems that work inside our computers and our smartphones. Standards work because they are robust, they are reliable, they are universal, and they, of course, work in an expected way, so they have a predictable behavior. But this is in engineering. What happens in biotechnology? Biotechnology is defined as the exploitation of living resources for industrial applications. The most sophisticated version of uh, biotechnology is synthetic biology, which has the ambitious goal of making life easier to engineer. But if we want to have this ambitious goal become a reality, synthetic biology also needs standards. So in order to fill that gap and to foster standardization in biology as much as possible, the project BioRobust was born. This is a European Union funded project that includes about 25 partners from Europe, which are academia, but also small and medium enterprises, nonprofit organizations and other key players, but also has international partners from the United States of America and also from Asia, from China and Japan. The goal of BioRobust is very simple, to foster as far as possible standardization in biology. And the question here is, what can be in fact standardized in synthetic biology? There are a range of different levels that can be standardized in synthetic biology. The most obvious one can be, for example, genes. We all think about genes or promoters, small genetic uh, parts that can indeed be standardized. Those parts can be combined into devices that can themselves be standardized as well, and devices can be combined into systems, circuits, and all this complexity can eventually be uh, integrated into a cell, typically a bacterial cell, but it can be a yeast cell as well, or even a mammalian cell or a plant cell. So those cells, genetically engineered ones, or synthetic biology agents, can either work alone or in combination with other cells, in what we call a consortium. And of course, all these modifications do not uh, work floating in the air, let's say, but there are people working with them in the laboratories, following procedures that can be standardized as well. So from this biological part to the final part, which is the human factor, human practices, all these different levels of synthetic biology can be standardized. To sum up, let's consider a bacterium and a building. Both of these things are complex entities, but they are not complex because their parts are complex, but because of the way these parts have been assembled. So if we consider a building, for example, one of the most beautiful buildings on Earth, the Taj Mahal building in Agra, India, a magnificent tomb that was once described by the poet Rabindranath Tagore, a, a teardrop on the cheek of time. This beautiful building is working both as a building and as, of course, as a masterpiece because of the wise and elegant way, uh, the very simple building blocks, in this case, white marble blocks, have been combined. If we are able to foster uh, far away enough standardization in synthetic biology, we may have as well our teardrop in biology on the cheek of time as well.